and welcome to Confab, a journey through the world of constructed language led by somebody entirely unqualified to talk about the subject. My name is Aiden and today I'm going to be laying out parameters and guidelines for what I want the language to be. My goals, essentially. But first, let's take a moment to appreciate how cute these little babies are! Okay, oh, down. Okay, we're going down. Okay. If you are familiar with David J. Peterson's The Art of Language Invention a web series, uh, or I think his book talks about this too, I can't remember off the top of my head, um, basically he suggests that anyone who starts to create their own language should lay down clear goals for what they want their language to be. Because the step-by-step -step process you're going to go through when you make a language is going to be different depending on the purpose of it. Personally, I feel like creatively the need to tie my language together with some form of um, symbolism or an overarching theme for the language. I did not have that type of unity or purpose when I was creating my last language. Um, I was designing a naturalistic language for a fictional world that I was creating, um, and the world as a whole wasn't super developed. Um, but I did know, and this is another problem that I had, that the story was located in this very metropolitan um, trading area in this fantastical world. Um, it was located in a setting where there would have been lots of languages um, intersecting and influencing each other, L languages and cultures behind them, um, and with those cultures political systems and family values and all sorts of things. Although actually interestingly enough the main character of this story was mute, um, which was part of, part of the appeal of like making a language for the story, like I'm going to go through all the effort of creating a language and like the main character isn't going to speak it. Um, so that was, that was fun for me. <laughs> but yeah, so it was just, I mean, like, the process of creating the language is already, like, such an overwhelming task in the first place, and then I, like, sort of, like, added on to that the stress of making a, making several languages, figuring out how they would influence each other, and, like, doing all of, all of this while trying to develop a narrative. It just, like, wasn't, like, the best uh, starting point, you can say. Now I'm in a different position. Um, this language that I'm working on now is totally different. It's not influenced by that at all. Basically, uh, I am somebody who's had a huge interest in like the occult um, and paranormal, the esoteric arts, and I've been interested in paganism as a potential um, religion for myself for a very long time. It's something that I always come back to. Um, however, I'm an atheist. Um, I was raised Protestant, and I like left religion. Um, and the idea of like joining like a religious structure isn't something I've always been super comfortable with. Um, and there's also like, um, I mean, I wouldn't call myself a skeptic, but I've always had, I've always like distanced myself from um, any sort of like real, like magical beliefs. But recently I was scrolling through, uh, I think Tumblr, um, it may have been something else, but um, I stumbled across these uh, blogs related to sigil use in witchcraft. Um, and a sigil, if you're not familiar, is essentially like um, a visual symbol. Um, that you use in rituals and amulets and talismans um, and these sorts of things uh, as a way to focus your energy. There's no real one right way to use sigils in witchcraft. Um, something that a lot of people do, which is something, it's not something that I would ever be super comfortable with just because of like the cultural element of it, um, but a lot of people will use Chinese characters. So for instance, if they're doing like a purification spell or a cleansing spell, they might use the character for water. Again, there's no one right way to do it, there's tons of other ways, but I saw that people were doing this, and I had this idea to make a language with an ideographic writing system for the purpose of ritual magic. Which was like a really exciting thing for me, especially since I've always had like an interest in orthography, um, the idea of like doing that, and I mean honestly like if I actually like make a language where this works and I might actually convert to paganism and just use use this as part of my practice, um, which I think would just be really fun and a great way of like connecting to my spirituality and incorporating spirituality into my language. Boop. They're my familiars. Okay, so again, like David J. Peterson said, having a sense of your goals, um, having guidelines laid out for yourself to work within is very helpful as you start this process. So here are uh, some of my goals in creating this language. Okay. Number one, this is a personal language. I am making this for me and for me alone. Okay. Number two, 
Um, this language does, as I said, take inspiration from paganism, um, from witchcraft, from the occult arts, but it's not bound to them. I'm not trying to create a pagan language, and even though I think it'd be cool to like use this in like spells or rituals, I don't want to be constrained by that. I'm really happy that I've found a source of inspiration, but I want this inspiration to take me wherever the language chooses to take me. Don't drink my water. Don't. I don't need rat-infested water now. Number three. I do want this language to push me out of my comfort zone, um, but I want it to be something that I'm able to manage. I don't want to include a lot of really, like, I want to be like a different person by the end of this project than I am now, um, but I don't want to be too overwhelmed by like trying to get my brain to process something that's extremely foreign to me um, just because it's foreign to me, if that makes sense. So number four, um, I am interested in naturalistic elements. I think they're super fun. Things like idiomatic expressions and irregularities and um, evolving new tenses. Like I'd want, I, I kind of want to like, um, go through different generations of this language the way one might when they're developing a naturalistic language. Um, that being said, I don't feel the need for this to be a naturalistic language. I want to use naturalistic elements as a tool rather than a rule book that I have to abide by, um, which I hope makes sense. Uh, again, like, naturalism's super freaking cool. Um, this is, again, a personal language just for me. Um, and I think that that's the best way to go about it for me. Okay, so hopefully that gives you and me a better sense of what my goals are and the guidelines that I've set for myself as I go forward in this process. If you would like, feel free to share what your goals are for your language in the comments below. Um, and I guess don't forget to like and subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have the best experience in your wonderful conlang journey. Sands. All right, peace.